OK, well, welcome back from the workshops. So our next panel is all about embedding the arts into regional and local partnerships. And really delighted uh, to have Nina Ruddle here with us today, who's going to chair this session. And it's a session that focuses on the role of the arts, creativity, culture and innovation in our local and regional partnership landscape, including public service and regional partnership boards. And we'll explore how North Wales is seeking to help the region's residents lead happy, healthy and collect, uh, connected lives. So welcome to Nina, Nina Ruddle, who's Head of Public Policy Engagement at Wrexham Glyndua University. She leads on the university's civic mission partnership strategy across North Wales, which aims to end social inequality by 2030. And Nina is going to introduce her panel. Okay, thank you. Hi. This is like the graveyard shift, isn't it? So we're going to do high energy. Um, and I, I, I don't know whether I... Can everyone hear me from here? Because it's really all... Anyway, yes, everyone hear me? Yeah? Yeah. 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 High energy. Excellent. Thank you. So, um, welcome. And that sounds... Um, it sounds quite dull as a title. And that's my, uh, that's my doing, because I created it. But it's, um, I think there's something really powerful and interesting in how we work in partnership and arts and creativity is for me at the core of a lot of the work that we do and I think we've got to do a lot more. So that's um, the title and the public service boards I will explain in a minute but I'm just going to introduce the panel and then I'll do a little bit of an intro. Um, so everyone's still with me? Yep, excellent. Right, so can you hear me? Yep. Um, we have got to my right Dr Terry Howitz Griffith, Howitzson Griffith, who is, I, I, I do know her really, I haven't just grabbed her off the street. Um, we do know each other. Um, I'm on the group for partnership, Arts and Health Partnership Board with uh, Terry. Terry leads the uh, Arts and Health Strategy for <coughs> Betsy Cadwallader Health Board. For those of you that know North Wales, up north, it sounds like Game of Thrones, there's about 750,000 people that, we, um, that live in the region of North Wales with six counties. Can I have a show of hands? Anyone from the north? Yay! Yay! We're all going on a bus back together later. Um, <laughs> I'll bring the popcorn. So um, Terry leads the arts in health. Uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit because that's just evolving at the moment. And it's a really interesting strategy about how we do work together in partnership and collaborate, um, particularly. Um, Professor Alex Shepley is, uh, I'm going to try and get this right, Professor in Arts and Society and uh, Research uh, Dean, it's nodding, yes, um, for the Arts, Science and Technology Faculty. There we are. I got that right. Thank you. It's been a really long day. Um, thank you, Alec. And then we've got Helen Goddard, who is, and I know this, definitely head of section for culture, hold on, libraries and information at Conway Canterbury Council. So you've got a real spread, real spread of academic, and um, I should say that Terry also works at John Moores University as a drama lecturer, as well as part-time in the health board. So really practitioner in the space as well. So it's really exciting to have such an expert panel. I'm not creative in any way, shape or form, but I just started knitting. So I feel as if I'm like <laughs> powering through with the, the crafty art. So thank you so much for staying with us. I do appreciate it. And for having an interest in how we work in partnership. Um, what I want to talk about a little bit is um, another hands up moment. Who's heard of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act? Excellent. So I don't have to explain it. Brilliant. OK, so I'm the vice chair of the public service boards in Wrexham and Flintshire. And I'm really, really passionate about the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the framework that that allows us to work together in a different way. And for me, the one thing I'm really um, again, passionately and enthusiastic about the arts and creative industries, but also the thinking that that can inject in the way that we work and what we do together. And um, I'm really passionate about bringing that into the partnership work that I do across North Wales. Um, the other partnership landscape across North Wales, which you've all probably got in other parts, in the south particularly, we've got things like, and I want to show a show of hands. Who's heard of the CJCs? Oh, there's a few there. Corporate joint committees, they sound quite like, yeah, serious, yeah? Um, they're like transport and planning, how we work together in those areas, local authorities. You've got regional <coughs> partnership boards. Yeah, that's the Social Care and Wellbeing Act, so that's regional. You've got your PSBs, which is your future generations. They're local. 
You've got, uh, we've got a regional leadership board across North Wales. We've got Ambition North Wales, the regional economic framework. Again, you'll have the Cardiff, Cardiff City region. So it's quite complex. And this is what we've created through legislation. So how we sort of try and integrate art and creativity and the brilliance that that can give, not only to the way we think and work, but actually deliver some of the projects that we do together as well. So some of the work that I do in our hugely hairy, audacious goal of trying to end social inequality that's been co-created is to really understand that the landscape's really complex, but what we try to do as a university, step in to go, guys, how can we be helpful and useful? It's really tough. There's no resources. Uh, people are struggling. So we've created regional alliances almost outside of that partnership landscape so that we can create spaces to innovate all people work within those the partnerships, all the health boards, local authorities, but we create spaces outside of it with regional alliances for change that are about movements for change. Let's just innovate and do some different things. And we're doing some really exciting work around community narratives and the wellbeing assessments. Again, hands up moment. Anyone, we have them. Do you know them? Yeah? Really? Yeah, no. <laughs> not. not at all. So the wellbeing assessments is what influences the wellbeing plans. That sets the plans and the priorities. And what we're trying to do is say, actually, how do we really understand the heart side? So what does that wellbeing assessment, that data, the 3.64 that is the percentage of the, what does that mean to the community that is impacted or affected by those issues? So we're going in with students from the arts um, school that Alec uh, leads um, into those areas and really sort of creating the community narratives and yesterday I was with the Programme Director for the Arts Humanities Research Council and this amazing publication about the value of arts and humanities. And I think we've really got to demonstrate that there's huge value, but also huge value in the way we think and work in partnership across that landscape. So I'm here really to just host this, but I've, I'm a passionate supporter about arts and creativity being in these spaces and places. And we recognise that we can't continue doing what we're doing. We have to change. We have to have creativity and innovation and partnership in the way that we work. And my job of work is a convener, really, across the region to bring partners together. We've got a massive network of called C4C, Community for Community, of systems leaders and change makers that we bring together, again, just to do things like this. Because we know... It's the conversations, not the consultation, that gets the real inspiration of projects that connect, bringing people in that's a bit different, having some um, different ways of working or thinking that make a difference to the people in which we serve. And I really, I love the weave analogy because I'm sort of in the knitting thing as well, <laughs> trying to weave a lot of these partnerships and the sort of disruptors of the system outside of it back into it so that actually we really can create true change and I really believe that the arts and creativity sector and I do a lot of work with these guys and many others is at the heart of that. I could talk about that for hours so I'm going to pause now because I think I'm going to probably get a red sign at some point soon. Um, <laughs> She'd just be pulling me off. Um, so I'm going to now st go to um, Terry and then Alec and then Helen to just give an overview of some of the, the challenges we've got in North Wales to actually really integrate and embed arts and creativity in that partnership landscape. But we're trying to do it in a bit of a disruptive way, which is quite cool, I think. So uh, I'm going to start with Terry and I'll be quiet and stand over there. I feel like we all need to stand, but I don't know whether you want to... I'll stand here. <laughs> There you go. I'm going to set myself a timer <laughs> because I do have a habit of talking for too long. Um, as anyone who's ever come into a university lecture room after me, they're sometimes literally trying to kick me out. <laughs> like, ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for Nina as well for inviting me to, to sort of join this panel. Um, so I'm going to give you some highlight thoughts because there were many, many, many. I've got notes and scribbles I've made as well from today. So I'll get to where I get to and that, that'll be it for today. Um, I joined the North Wales Health Board about just over 12 months ago into this role of arts and health strategic lead. Um, and coming into a space where there's been really rich history around arts, health and wellbeing. So the Creative Well programme, which is the name for the arts and health and wellbeing work that's done there, has been in existence for 10 years this 
this year. And even before that, there was already artists in residence and things happening in collaboration and in partnership. So I think one of the things I found and noticed, and, and knew from my days before at Bangor University when I worked on the um, Dimensional Imagination programme, was that partnership happens, and that's wonderful to see that it happens. Um, there are some things that I think we're doing to try to strengthen some of that. So um, like other health boards, we're looking to create a strategy for the work that we're doing. So trying to think about a, a longer term plan for, for what arts and health should look like and what wellbeing looks like within that sphere. Um, so most of our connections into things like public service boards come through people like Nina because we can't be in every single space. And I think that's a, a challenge that I'm going to put up front. So it's thinking about our networks and connections for how we make that work. Um, one of the things that we've got set up is an arts, health and wellbeing steering group that came out of a, a past steering group around what was called the Concorda Agreement in North Wales. I think we're going to go through a bit of a renaming because lots of people looked at me a bit questioning, but a Concorda is an understanding. But I think actually what we need is maybe a forum, a network that has more of that conversation element to it. And what's been really interesting in the conversations around that is that still lots of enthusiasm for it, especially for face-to-face -face opportunities. So this has been fantastic today thank you Wahoon um, but to think about other things that have happened because we do now have Wahoon in this sector space so some of the objectives of that Concordat perhaps are being met at a national level and are better in that conversation space but one of the key things that's coming through that from the conversations I've been having with artists with partner arts organizations uh, is, is about celebration and the opportunity to share the things that we're doing so I think that has to be at the forefront of everything that we come to do so that we have those opportunities um, and I'm really thinking about the spaces of where are the gaps actually so um, trying to instead of trying to do projects in spaces that are already happening is where aren't things happening and where can we connect things together um, not an easy task that makes it sound really simple doesn't it um, but it is something that I think we need to be thinking about so hopefully this kind of concord at this group this forum that will be really beneficial and trying to expand the range of um, people who are part of that group as well so that we're trying to be really inclusive um, as Nina said, it's six counties in North Wales, population of 700,000. There's 19,000 staff just in the health board. Um, you can't know everybody. Um, and so it's just trying to think how we strategically bring those people together. And equally, thinking about a creative forum within the health board as well, to try to nurture that idea of creativity embedded within a healthcare space. So I'm already meeting some brilliant people who are real champions of this within patient experience, within occupational health, and different parts of the health board who are really keen to work and use arts and creativity and they're absolutely keen to meet artists and arts organisations as well. So how can we help bring that to them as well a little bit? So two, I think those two spaces that will have slightly different audiences but times where we might need to bring them together because sometimes there's things we need the arts community know, to know, sometimes there's things we need the health community to know and sometimes there's a collectivisation together. So that's a really key one. Um, some real challenges. Uh, my role is, is fixed term for three years. Um, there's so much we could do but capacity is a real issue and there's just such growing demand. Um, I've got a list of inquiries and possible projects that I'd love to do, um, and it's only growing. So some, some thinking needs to happen around how do we take it to the next level to grow it. So, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to say a couple more things is that uh, it was said at the beginning that there's some difficulties operating in public sector spaces, and I think the more we can sort of think about and be acknowledging some of the difficulties that we each experience so some of the barriers of being within public sector in terms of people have a lot of strong opinions about what you spend your money on and where it goes um, that can feel like a real challenge um, and sometimes it can be difficult to innovate in a system that feels under increasing pressure so how do we create brave spaces to be able to allow that innovation to take place uh, in Betsy there's the Betsy way better together movement that has been led by the improvement team so I think that provides one opportunity but I'm sure that there are others as well. Um, and then obviously for artists, the freelance, the sector that we can't do the projects without, so how do we best support them? And I had a lovely conversation earlier, we were talking about, you know, when we're setting up projects and you don't know if you've got the money, you want to get that early conversation started, but not want to put more labour onto people who are perhaps in precarious em employment as well. So I think it's sort of thinking about some of our commonalities, some of the challenges, some of the difficulties and ways that we can work together. And um, having the time and scope to do some of this feels really important. 
important. So I haven't got a lot of answers on this at the minute, but I think it's important to go, how do we acknowledge some of this? And then through those conversations, start to turn that into action. Um, so I'm going to pause and leave it there, because um, uh, I could carry on, but I'll, I'll stop there and keep myself on time. We've got no signs yet, we're doing well. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't really want to shout, you see. Um, so I'm, I'm Alec. I'm from Wrexham University. I'm an Associate Dean for Research, as Nina said. And I wanted to tell you a story. But before I did, I just wanted to ask if anyone's heard of action learning sets. It just came to me about 30 seconds ago. I've been trying to think of it all day, <laughs> because that's where our story starts, really. I started at Wrexham in 2016 and working with uh, Dr. Sue Liggett, who is one of the people I wanted to acknowledge today as starting this journey, if you like, from Wrexham School of Art or in Wrexham School of Art. And the challenge that we had was how do we get things going in a small regional art school, in a small university with limited resources, but knowing that we've got great students and great people and we've got some great friends out there, all of whom were thinking similarly, how do we move things along? So I, through, through a conversation brokered by one of the governors, I had a, a sit down with the director of Mostyn at Llandidno and we came up with an idea to do one thing and do it well and that was to fund a PhD between the two of us, um, the two institutions I mean, um, based around an issue that they had identified as a traditional uh, art gallery wanting to move with the times into the digital era um, and bring its audience with it as well as the new audiences that they were attracting. So we devised a mutually funded joint PhD between us and that was the first one. It's now been vivid and that person is now a doctor and it's the first one that we did out of about five or six uh, and I brought a list with me so our story is really about developing highly selective partnerships based on your limited resource envelope how many people you've got around the table and trying to be strategic because before then at that art school and at the art school I'd worked at prior to that in, in England, it felt a little bit like random and ad hoc, when really I felt that the university should be conducting research that was required rather than being reactive to what people were turning up saying, I've got an idea that I want to do in pottery, can you find a supervisor for me? I wanted to do it the other way around, saying we want research conducting into X and then recruit students that way. Being in Wrexham at that time, um, there were some fairly healthy parts of Wrexham and there were some bits of Wrexham which were, should we say, a little bit bruised and we wanted to think about how art could serve a purpose. You know, what was its purpose? What was its function? What could be its goal? Um, to be of use, really. Subsequently, T. Paub has developed a space, T. Paub is the gallery in, in Wrexham, which is entirely devoted to useful art, not because of anything that I've said, but because it makes sense, and a lot of other people have realised that too. So we devised a programme of PhDs to do with art which is of use, and a whole strategy that's called Art Plus. So art doesn't exist in a vacuum, you all know that, it exists because of something other than it. Um, so we have now an arts and digital PhD under our belts. We, the next one we did was Betsu Cadwallader Health Board, um, looking at the way artists working on wards can have an, an impact or a benefit or, or an effect on health outcomes. So that was another funded uh, PhD. The next one was um, 
the creation of social spaces. We again did a joint PhD with T. Paub. That's just been vivid. Um, and we've started another one with T. Paub to do with um, how T. Paub can attract black and Asian minority ethnic grassroots communities into its orbit, if you like, and that's working with other agencies that are related, whether they be local authorities, community groups or schools. So what we've done as a starting point, which was to do with people and place and what was required, we've worked out, I think, a, a fairly practical strategy to do with building something that is of use. But also, I was really interested in the idea of evidence. So each of these doctoral theses that um, are produced provide an evidence base for others to use because we all know the benefits. We know the benefits of art, music, dance and health, but it's some of those people who have their hands on the funding levers need to be convinced with an evidence base to get their hand off that funding lever. So there's a, a sort of rationale behind it is it provides the evidence base for that. The other thing I meant to say was that each of the PhDs is directed at a practitioner. Um, not because we're anti-theory, it's because we are artists working in an art school and that's, that's what we do. Um, so we've played to our strengths. So we wanted to recruit people who are actually involved and engaged in practice to produce these projects. I'm sure I've missed lots and lots of things. I haven't kept a note of how long I've been talking. Um, uh, and we've, we've got another one on the... Uh, so. OK. Straight with the red, Alex. It's not even answer. Red card. Well, I am a United fan, so I'm used to red cards. <laughs> And I'll end on um, the fact that we've just started a conversation with the National Museum for Football in Manchester and the museum in Wrexham about an art and football PhD, which hopefully will happen. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Can I, can I apply for that PhD? That sounds fantastic. Um, right, hi, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Helen Goddard and I work in Conway Council, as, as Nina told you. Um, so I've been working there for longer than I care to remember. Uh, and I'm responsible for driving forward Cray Conway, which is our culture strategy for Conway County, for the region. So uh, the culture strategy um, is all about and has always been about um, driving um, community connection and well-being and cultural regeneration through the arts and through, um, through uh, culture and heritage. But we wrote the strategy back in 2019, going into the start of 2020, and obviously then the pandemic, then the cost of living crisis, the war in Ukraine, and just a completely, I mean, who else feels that it's just a completely different world that we're living in now to three years ago? So us being the kind of agile folk that we are in the, in the, in the culture team, we, we really did stop, take stock, and have a think about what we wanted this strategy to achieve. And we really focused in on the well-being side of things. So we know, and obviously, again, as has been said many times today, preaching to the a very converted experts group of people here, but we know that, that we know that participation in culture and the arts makes you healthier, it makes you happier, it makes your life better, it connects generations, it connects communities, it helps to build and glue together where that glue is, is missing. So we, you know, we all know that, but we recognise that certainly within the Cray Connery kind of movement that we're trying to establish um, in the last year or so. And so we've been really kind of pivoting towards trying to identify as many opportunities as we can for arts and health and, and wellbeing projects. So... With that in mind, um, two things have happened really. One is that we've been connecting as well as we can with colleagues working in, in North Wales. We're trying, like Nina has described, we're trying really, really hard to build those alliances that we have the capacity and the time to, to participate in so that we can really start trying to think outside of the 
the box that is the local authority, if you like. So, I mean, I think, I think I'm, I'm the last speaker in the last session, um, but I'm also the only speaker, I think, that's here from a local authority today. So I don't want to end it on the, <laughs> I don't want to end it on the doom and gloom, guys, but it's not good <laughs> where we are right now. You know, there, it, we are facing an existential crisis in the local authority setting when it comes to the delivery and the support of culture and the arts. Now, we are only a, we are only a part of the jigsaw. We're part of the, the puzzle. But one of the things I think is really important that needs to be recognised is that traditionally local authorities have been commissioners of a lot of arts and creativity activity. You know, so if you lose that opportunity then the sector is yet again feeling that knock-on that knock-on effect and, and haven't creatives in the creative industries haven't they had enough to bear already so you know it's thinking about the knock-on effect of the damaging impacts of funding being lost in different in different ways so I think that the second thing I wanted to, to, to mention was that not only are we trying to work in that more collegiate way and we're trying to establish partnerships that take us outside of what we would say are the more traditional and hierarchical ways that local authorities work and also just so that as Derek is in the room what the Future Gens Act is all about so that that integration and collaboration being more effective but also we have to be better and I'm talking about the local authority here not the sector we have to be better at demonstrating the difference that we're making so I, I was at a, a I was at a brilliant conference it's probably about two years ago now but Phil Redmond Sir Phil Redmond said culture is a frontline service and it stayed with me for the last couple of years because that's what we have to communicate to people who are making decisions in the local authority that's what has to get across to our politicians and to our senior leadership team we're not dispensable we absolutely are not dispensable and the only way we can do that is by building up the evidence base as Alex just described it now we had a conversation about this morning this this morning in the skills in the skills cafe sorry the data cafe about impact measurement and impact demonstration impact now I feel personally and I'm sure a lot of practitioners here feel that the stuff that really makes a difference is the qualitative stuff it's the longitudinal stuff it's the journey that people go on it's being able to talk about personal lived experiences of recovery more so than being able to say an arts or health intervention saves the local health board one pound 72 per person per head of population you know it feels a bit almost cynical to, to use that kind of that tool but I've got to tell you from where we are within the local authority that's what councillors are going to need to hear and that's what decision makers are going to need to hear and when social prescribing funding is coming down from social care partners that's what they're going to need to hear as well so we within Cray Conway are now uh, we've, we've been successful with some shared prosperity funding and we're using a big chunk of that to develop a really strong um, impact methodologies that will work at that, at that local local authority level you know there's a lot going on on the macro and micro level there's some regional national international brilliant toolkits and resources out there but we need something that works as a really straightforward piece of advocacy that we can use in Conwy but that we can also give to our colleagues next door in Denbyshire and in Flintshire and in Gwynedd and say use this and I think it has to be built on the act and it has to be built in partnership with the, the, the sorts of alliances that Nina's described but I think it is really important to stress that never more than ever have we needed within the public sector and within the local authority setting to demonstrate why culture, arts and heritage are so important and certainly within Conway we're only a tiny little local authority there's only 3,000 of us you know that's that's nothing really but we even within the local authority we've got to make those links stronger we've got to strengthen those referral pathways and we've got to build the relationships between us over in culture libraries arts and heritage and our, par our, our colleagues who are in the same flipping building they're just on the floor they're just on the next floor but with social care and working more closely with the well-being teams and with the family centres and with all of those other teams that are part of the same organisation that we all call Conway, even though many of them we've never even met. So I think with us, we're, we're starting from within, <laughs> but um, we're leaning on, on the, the fantastic and collegiate approach of, of colleagues in, in the region. So I guess in summary, it's a very, very difficult landscape. It's a, it's a hostile financial climate at the moment, but I really do think that there's also cause for a lot of hope and optimism, but I do think that the way to achieve the change we're going to need is, is through really embedding the Future Generations Act, and which is a good segue into Nina perhaps talking about how arts, culture and creativity can contribute to the wellbeing assessment, maybe, to finish off. Thank you very much. <laughs> because I thought I might get a red card. I'm okay. I've got two sets. I've done some summary. I'll have to do it on my hand because I left my notepad here. So it's a lot creative though. Um, 
I think there's something that Terry's talked about and it's about pooling resources. We need to do that far more and that's what we're doing in North Wales. So I'm working on a storytelling project. We looked after children, children with additional learning needs and early years and three partners have just put money together to go, we know storytelling is a way to tell humans how we care and what we want and how that shapes the service. So we're doing some really innovative work with evidence and research at the heart of it to go, this stuff works, we need to do it more because that shapes the work that we need to do in the future to support support our citizens so there's that and I think that's something we could explore I think there's something around the vehicles that are happening the things that are funded we need to jump on them more we need to get more partners on board with it we've got a brilliant project in North Wales called Children's University and we're using this massive vehicle of innovation to go yeah we're working with children to connect to community assets and learn outside of the classroom which can support the curriculum and community focused schools but actually we're sending well-being boxes home to their families so that parents can be creative and they can cook so there's something and, and it's getting involved these things are open this is the whole thing about all this work should be about systems change how we open up the doors of the PSB and all these partners to work together because that's the only way we're going to achieve the change that we need to see and, and for me it's that creative part of our brain is the bit that we need to engage far more I think Alec makes a really good point about evidence and the Arts Humanities Research Council they've got funding we need to work together to secure this funding for Wales the evidence is this stuff that you're all doing that's brilliant that works there's, there's funding here and we can get this. We just got to work together with the gifts we all bring and all our specialist skills because it's the power of the collective and, and the challenge and the ambition that the, the, the Wellbeing Future Generations Act sets for us. We've got to change and do that better. And I think the final thing is, and it talks to Helen's point, none of us are alone in this space. We're all citizens of Wales. We all care and love Wales. And you can see that it's palpable today. But I think we're all working in the same space so it's Betsy's in special measures at the moment you've probably seen it on the news but you know what we go let's put our shoulders behind the wheel and work together and not throw stones at it because actually we need to be in the system disrupting it on the outside and making it all work and, and sort of taking the fear and the trauma outside of these systems and these organizations to have compassion and kindness at everything we do so and that's all the work we're doing I could talk for a very long time Angela but I'm not going to um <laughs> And then finally, there's a shout out. Um, come up north and see us in North Wales. Everyone's welcome. We'll do a weave next in North Wales. We'll host it there for you. Yeah, we're all over this. I, I'll find the funding somewhere, guys. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> And one of the five ways of working, this is my final thought, is integrate. And I think that's where the key is for all of us. If we integrate all of our priorities each organisation's got for the systems we serve, which doesn't matter whether in Holyhead or Sealand, we can actually really achieve our organisational objectives aligning so you can sort of say to your boss, yeah, I'm doing it because this is... But actually, it aligns across the whole region. We need to work regionally but deliver locally. So we satisfy the county councillors and really do that local, what impacts communities directly and citizens. But actually, we've got to work far smarter regionally and as a nation. We're only small and we're brilliant and we can do this stuff. So I think that's... So we've got an event on the 24th of October as well, which is all about integrate, bringing together any sector that's working in well-being, so economic, cultural, social, environmental, we're bringing everyone together to go, tell us your priorities and one project, and by the time we walk out the door, we're going to connect people into different projects that perhaps they never would have known was going on in North Wales, and we're not that big. So that's the call. Like, if you want to come along, that's great. 24th of October, <laughs> I'm going to go now, Angela. She's like, she's, she's breaking out into a sweat. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, so isn't that the perfect invigorator as everyone starts to flag in the afternoon? We've got our final breakout sessions downstairs and at 4.40 we're back in this room for one final half an hour to close things down. Some really uh, more great speakers, so hopefully we'll see you back here at 4.40. Thank you. <laughs>